A snake weighing a whole ton, huge flying birds, truly gigantic insects, and fish. When I say gigantic, I mean this, this, or even this. Such creatures really once lived on our planet, and I will tell you about some of them in this video. And if you watch the video to the end, you'll learn why many people still believe in the existence of the Yeti. Enjoy watching! I must warn you that there will be several terms in this video. I am not a scientist and do not claim to be one. Just like you, I'm very interested in learning something new in an entertaining format. And if I made a mistake somewhere, be sure to write about it in the comments. Let's get to the truth together! Well, let's finally delve into the world of ancient animals. Imagine a wild boar or a warthog. Got it? And now, imagine in your head an image a hundred times more disgusting than the one you imagined. It should have turned out something like this. Six feet tall, almost 12 feet long, weighing up to 2,000 pounds. Huge fangs and jaws capable of withstanding such a powerful, grotesque jaw. This creature is called Deodon or Dinahias. It inhabited our planet tens of millions of years ago, in the Miocene, in the territory of modern North America and a little bit of Asia. Here, if you look at the map. Dino Hyas moved in small groups and also constantly migrated in search of new sources of food. This is known from the analysis of the remains found. According to researchers, these ancient boars were omnivorous. They fed on various plants and hunted small mammals and also did not disdain carrion. I wonder why they only ate small mammals. Were there larger animals at that time? In addition, the skulls of these animals, found by scientists, were severely deformed. Moreover, there were bite marks on them specifically from relatives. It can be assumed that dino highs fought each other, perhaps for territory or for females. Unfortunately, we cannot know for sure, only speculate. Fortunately, these giant boars became extinct. About 16 million years ago, the climate on the planet changed sharply, and there was a mass extinction of many animal species. But the ancestors of Deodons still share the Earth's territory with us. Pigs, hippos and wild boars. By the way, some modern boars are almost as large as Dinahias. See for yourself. This little guy was caught by hunters not so long ago. Well, it's terrifying. Perhaps I won't go for walks in the forest looking for mushrooms and berries anymore. At least without a gun. Almost at the same period, Megistotherium roamed our planet just a slightly different place, in the areas of modern Africa and South Asia. It was about 20 million years ago. The greatest beast, the bone crusher, that's what they call this monster. Why a monster? Only the skull of Megistotherium was over 25 inches long, and the whole creature was over 10 feet from nose to tail tip. And that's not even the limit. Some fragmentary remains of larger individuals can give sizes of 15 feet in length, including the tail, 6 feet in height, and up to 3,000 pounds in weight. Isn't that a monster? According to some data, this is the largest mammal ever to have lived on our planet. Megistotherium hunted only for large prey, lurking near water bodies. It would pounce on proboscideans, primitive rhinos, large pigs, and other well-fed animals. Its grip was deadly, its mouth opened wide and was able to tear pieces of meat right off the living creature. That's how the monster acted. And then it waited for the prey to bleed out and die, to eat it whole, including the bones. Can you imagine? Even the bones! And this is Androsarchus, judging by its appearance, a striped ancestor of the modern tiger. Or maybe not. No one can prove exact information about the classification of this animal into any group. Moreover, reconstructions made by different scientists at different times do not resemble each other. Let's go in order. In 1923, an expedition consisting of employees of the American Museum of National History and local paleontologists conducted excavations in northern China. At that time, an impressive mammalian skull belonging to an unknown creature was unearthed in a town called Irdin Manha in Inner Mongolia province. And this, attention, is 30 inches long compared to the 25-inch skull of Megistotherium. Such huge mammalian skulls had never been encountered by scientists before, 
so the discovery immediately began to be thoroughly studied. Initially, paleontologists assumed that the skull belonged to an animal from the group of entilodons, large ferocious predators. However, Henry Osborne, who described the skull, attributed the animal to Mesonychids ungulates. Andrew Sarkis's dimensions seem impressive, up to 15 feet in length and up to 6 feet in height at the shoulder. Its legs were 5 or 4 toed, and each toe had a hoof. That's probably all the available information about this giant. And we are unlikely to ever learn precise details about the life of this animal. It is only known that it was probably omnivorous. Not very fast, but quite heavy, which allowed it to steal prey from other predators. As you may have guessed, according to some scientists, Andrew Sarkis is the true holder of the title largest mammal ever to have existed. But these are just theories. What about birds? Here, for example, is Forus rachis, and it's just impressive. It is one of the largest predators ever to roam South America. Well, or at least the largest in the Pliocene epoch. Essentially, these birds are very similar to our modern ostriches, but with gigantic beaks and very sharp claws. The height of Forus rachis could reach about 8 feet, and the beak was 25 inches long, sharp and powerful making these monsters very convincing predators. Some scientists believe that forest rachis could hunt animals like horses or rhinos, or just swallow prey the size of a lynx. And you know what's most amazing? These birds couldn't fly, but their running speed was simply phenomenal. Some scientists even claim that their speed was comparable to that of a cheetah. Can you imagine what it's like to see such a giant racing straight towards you? Essentially, this is a huge, aggressive and very fast ostrich armed with a powerful beak. And how fortunate it is that these giants no longer roam our Earth. They became extinct about two and a half million years ago. Didn't Forest Rakus impress you? Then take a look at Quetzalcatlus, the largest creature ever to soar through the sky. And it was named after the ancient Aztec god, who was often depicted as a feathered serpent. Quetzalcatlus was a true giant, even by the standards of the Cretaceous period in which it lived. The wingspan was 40 feet, and the height was about 30. Now that's power! And although its size is impressive, the bird didn't weigh much, thanks to its hollow bones. This is what allowed this monster to fly through the sky. Of course, it had a sharp beak, with which the bird caught prey. Interestingly, Quetzalcatlus preferred to feed on carrion, like some modern marabou storks. It seems like such a strange combination, a majestic giant feeding on scraps. Just imagine how amazing it would be to see such a creature alive. It's almost like an airplane, only alive. And how did it become extinct? I thought such a creature was invincible. Do you think all these giants lived a long time ago? 300, 500 million years ago? Well, no, just 6 million years ago in the territory that is now Argentina, lived the fearsome predator, Argentavis, a flying bird that many paleontologists consider the largest and heaviest of all flying birds to have ever existed on Earth. You might ask, what about Quetzalcatlus? The thing is, it's usually not classified as a bird. It doesn't have feathers. So, let's get back to Argentavis. Yes, it was a real monster bird. It weighed from 140 to 160 pounds. Its body length was about 12 feet, and its height ranged from 5 to 7 feet. These are truly gigantic proportions. But the wingspan of this bird reached 20 feet, and that's almost twice as much as that of an albatross, the largest modern representative of this class. There is no doubt that Argentavis was able to fly. Analysis of the fossils of this bird suggests that it mainly used gliding flight and probably used rising warm air currents. It rarely flapped its wings, doing so only for short periods of time. Scientists have also determined that the minimum flight speed of Argentavis was 35 feet per second, or 25 miles per hour. Imagine what it's like to see such a giant soaring in the skies over the landscapes of Argentina. I think it would be an incredible sight. I wonder, can you ride on it? Like on the eagles in the Lord of the Rings. Are you afraid of flying insects? When we talk about insects, we usually imagine tiny and not very noticeable creatures. But in the Paleozoic era, 
approximately 300 million years ago, life on Earth looked completely different. And the hierarchy was quite different as well. At that time, insects ruled the planet, and they were far from what they are today. They were enormous. And I would like to tell you about one of such representatives. In 1880, in France, in the town of Commentry, Meganor was first discovered. And almost a hundred years later, in 1979, a second specimen was found in the territory of Great Britain, in Derbyshire County. These findings astonished paleontologists, raising many questions about the size of this ancient dragonfly. After all, all the findings indicated that Meganora had a wingspan of up to 25 to 40 inches and a body length of over 15. Terrifying, isn't it? But how did these giants become extinct? Meganora were displaced from the planet by two factors a drop in the oxygen level in the atmosphere and the emergence of birds. The decrease in the oxygen level was particularly dangerous for Meganora because they could not adapt to the new conditions, which led to their extinction. Since Meganora breathed through their entire body, an increase in oxygen content could have promoted their growth. However, even when the oxygen level in the atmosphere increased again, millions of years later, Meganora never returned. Birds appeared, with which large dragonflies simply could not compete. And that's how these giants lost the evolutionary race. Remember the mighty basilisk from Harry Potter? It seems it was truly gigantic. Do you think such giant snakes ever existed on our planet? Or is it just fiction? My answer? They existed. Approximately 60 to 58 million years ago, during the Paleocene Epoch. Titanoboa, the largest, longest and heaviest snake ever to have inhabited the Earth. Adult specimens could reach 40 feet in length and weigh about 2,500 pounds. It's simply unimaginable. And do you know what this monstrous snake fed on? You'll be surprised. Fish. The thing is, at that time, there were no mammals large enough to satisfy a snake of such size. But there were aquatic reptiles. There were plenty of them. To feast, Titanoboa only needed a couple of swift strikes. And even the main technique of modern pythons and anacondas, deadly constricting suffocating coils, Titanoboa did not use. Helicoprion Another interesting creature. It closely resembles a modern shark. Body length up to 10 feet, fins, tail, but has one interesting feature. A unique tooth spiral. It was this spiral that scientists first discovered. They speculated for a long time about which creature this detail could belong to. And finally, after a short time, they were able to conclude. An unusual shark. The most recent reconstruction of this creature looks something like this. A cute little fish, isn't it? And what teeth it has! They resemble a chainsaw! The number of teeth in such chainsaws reaches 180, but in most specimens there are only about 100. By the way, these sharks have no other teeth. The upper jaw is empty. And this spiral didn't unwind or eject from the mouth. It just always remained in such an awkward position. I even feel a little sorry for Helicoprion. It must have been terribly inconvenient. Scientists believe that this marine predator lived in the Carboniferous period, survived one mass extinction and then disappeared. The remains of this beast are almost non-existent. And finally, we come to that very creature that resembles the Yeti, Gigantopithecus. Even from the name, it's clear that it's some kind of huge beast resembling an ape. We know practically nothing about these animals, because all we have are teeth. Giant teeth. Lots of giant teeth and entire jaws. And all reconstructions of Gigantopithecus are done by proportionally enlarging an orangutan, since its teeth are very similar to those of Gigantopithecus. And in the end, the orangutan was enlarged so much that the resulting monster reached 10 feet in height and weighed 1500 pounds. It is also known where these animals lived, in the bamboo jungles and mountains of Vietnam, India and China. After all, those same teeth were found in these areas. Moreover, there is an opinion that Gigantopithecus was an omnivorous creature, quite intelligent, roughly at the level of early humans, and also bipedal, using tools. Perhaps this opinion formed the basis of the theory of the Yeti. 
Some people believe that somewhere in the Himalayas, giant hairy people live. Officially, however, Gigantopithecus became extinct. This happened only about 300,000 years ago. And the main reason? Persecution by intelligent humans. Such unusual animals once existed on our planet. If someone invented a time machine, would you go see some creature? Or do you prefer to stay in comfort and safety, just like me? Write your answer in the comments. Thanks for watching.